I'm Sister Margaret McDonnell, CND. I was born into a family that was Gaelic speaking, and so it was a very natural situation for me to be, retain my interest in that right up until the present day. When I did my undergraduate studies, I was very fortunate in my teacher, all my teachers for that matter, and uh, especially Sister St. Veronica, also a CND, a great woman and a great teacher. And she had a great concern about the decline of the use of the Gaelic language. She encouraged me later on to embark on a pro program of studies in Celtic languages and literatures. I was able to spend a, a whole summer in Edinburgh, at Edinburgh University. And uh, I was exposed to many scholars in this field. I attended the International Congress of Celtic Studies. And then when I came back to St. FX to university, 1977, I was asked to take over the department. It was a small department at that time, and uh, not everybody understood the importance of this particular area in the humanities. But I did get a good bit of support. And some of our students picked up the whole study and now they're leaders in the promotion of the Gaelic language. People are teaching their children the language. And there's a lot of communication with um, Celtic scholars overseas and in America. And so it's kind of heartening to see that movement. And of course, it's also important to um, retain a certain area of study in the humanities because Celtic languages were spoken in Europe prior to French and Spain, Galicia and so on. So it has, the languages have deep roots. They bring people together I think up until Sister Eileen Scott made such a breakthrough on the history of Marguerite that up until then we were all aware of Marguerite and her importance in the congregation, but we didn't know as much about her. But from then on, um, she became not only a great missionary, but a great figure in history. And to this day, you know, people are looking upon her as one of the real founders of Montreal, Ville Marie. And then the, the, man, the methods that she used to establish the congregation uh, are so inspiring, and the courage she had. And I think in the present day, uh, we're all looking at radical change in the church, in religious orders, in society, among the young. And she continues to be a beacon, uh, inviting us to be aware of the contemporary scene and to be involved. And that's why I, this whole intercultural international dimension now of the community is an answer to part of her vision too. And I think it's very heartening for all of us. We're fortunate that we are able to be in tune with all of that. That's a blessing on you.